Daosa watched Palesa as she gazed at Hunter Sia from across the blood and body filled river. Asa had never asked who the father of Palesa's unborn child was, as the subject made Palesa uncomfortable. Now Asa knew why. Palesa wanted to tell Sia to shout the news across the river, but this was not the time. There were bodies everywhere, and the thick scent of blood and fire filled the air. The Brotherhood had started to leave, the battle had been lost. But Sia lingered by the river. Nala asked, Is that her? Yes, Sia murmured, his voice full of sorrow. Who knew mermaids and snake people could unite? Maybe one day, my dear Sia? Maybe one day? Nala offered comforting words. A few days later, Asa summoned Palesa and cut straight to the point. Palesa, the secret you hold in your belly is one I cannot protect you from. The hunters are our sworn enemies by blood, and as a soon-to-be mother myself, it breaks my heart to tell you your child will not be welcome here, Palesa. After this war, our people are angry, and your child is not safe here. Palesa understood the truth in Queen Asa's words. Asa continued, This is Mira. She will help you deliver your baby when the time comes. You must leave this place, Palesa. You are welcome back here, but I will not decide for you the fate of your child. A few months later, Sia stood in a dark forest. He had received a pigeon with a message to come to this location. Palesa wanted to see him. He wanted to ignore the letter, thinking it might be a trap, but if he didn't go, he would never know. He wanted to see her one last time. As he neared the place where they had first met, he heard an infant cry. He drew his sword, the scent of the snake people permeating the air. He had been a fool to come here alone. He could smell two distinct scents. One was Palisa and the other was unknown. He approached the clearing and saw a child in a basket and a letter addressed to him. The letter read, Sha, if you are reading this, I am already on my way to Snake Island. This child is both yours and mine, and my people can never accept the part of you that is in this child. I have not named him yet. I will give you the honor of doing so. I know ending his life is a decision that will cross your mind. Honestly, it has crossed mine too. This will be your decision to make now. All my love, Palisa. Sia fell to the ground, his legs unable to carry his weight. The child looked at Sia intensely, as if understanding that today could be his last. Palisa also watched from her hidden place, heart pounding in her throat. The snake goddess and the goddess of the hunt looked down with intrigue. Would the blood of the hunters and the snake people be able to coexist in the same body, or would Sia wield the sword of judgment and put an end to the dilemma? Palesa, the snake goddess, the goddess of the hunt and the child, watched intently as Sia lifted his sword. My dear tribe members, it is said that blood does not lie, it keeps an accurate record. But that is the thing with records, some can be erased. Shah closed his eyes and swung his sword, and the crying stopped. You are watching the Tales of the Savannah. Subscribe and be part of the tribe. Now let's get back to the story. Zoro, Zoro, I need your help, Sia whispered urgently, his voice trembling with desperation. Since the war, the bond between them had grown strong. Much had changed, with Cabo now leading the hunters. Cabo's team had risen to prominence, bringing with it new responsibilities and prestige. What is it, Sia? Zoro asked, his eyes filled with concern. Sia, usually calm and composed, now seemed on the edge of panic. Sia pulled him aside, looking around nervously. I have a child, he confessed, his voice shaking. That's good news, we must celebrate, Zoro replied. No, you don't understand, Sia interrupted, his eyes wide with fear. Do you remember the snake girl, Palisa? Zoro's expression changed as the gravity of the situation sank in. Where is the child? he asked, his voice now deadly serious. I couldn't do it. I couldn't end its life. The goddess knows I tried, Sia cried, tears streaming down his face. Get it together, Sia, Zoro snapped, slapping him across the face. Sia stumbled back, shocked. In the village, Sia admitted, his voice barely a whisper. I left him with grandmother. We must tell Cabo, Zoro declared, his mind racing. Sia dropped to his knees, clutching Zoro's legs. Please, father, no, I beg you. This was the first time Sia had called Zoro father. Both men had avoided acknowledging their true relationship, fearing what it would mean. Zoro remembered Sia's mother, a lost love from the past. 
Seeing Sia kneeling and begging, Zoro felt his heart break. Is this what it felt like to be a parent? He had never stayed in one place, always moving from one woman to the next, searching for something. But in Sia, he found it, a reason to care, a reason to fight. In battle, they had fought side by side. For the first time, Zoro had gone into combat with the fear of loss. That day, he had fought not just as a warrior, but as a father. Zoro knelt down, lifting Sia to his feet. We will find a way, my son, he said, his voice firm but filled with emotion. We will find a way. Back to present day. Nala walked closely behind her father. Please, father, I'm begging you. Nala. He stopped and looked straight at her. We don't just get a new team member because we want one. The matter has to be put through the Council of Elders first, and you know this. I feel that he would be perfect on our team, father. That you have made painfully clear all morning. And stop following me, he added with a wink before closing the door. What was so urgent? Jengo asked as he sat down. The results of our new member were fascinating, Samuel said. Indeed, Jengo replied. Is there more? He asked impatiently. Yes, there is. His results show a match for both Zoro and Sia, which is rare, but get this. There is snake blood found in him too. Jengo's eyes widened in shock. There had been rumors in the past about a hunter snake boy, but Jengo had thought them to be myths and legends, stories to pass the time. But now, modern technology was revealing what had been hidden, exposing the dark secrets of the Brotherhood. Samuel, Jengo looked him in the eyes. How many people know about this? Only me, Samuel said. I have been up all night testing and retesting the results. Bury these results for now. This stays only between the two of us. Yes, Jengo, I understand, Samuel said, knowing that this information could fracture the Brotherhood and the values they stood for. Amina and the Snake Man raced through the streets toward the tunnels. Amina had grabbed the books she was desperately searching for before leaving. Their keen ears picked up frantic phone calls. Hello, there has been an explosion in one of the apartments. Hello, we heard screeching sounds and screams coming from, Hello, please send someone immediately. The sound of sirens grew louder, and they knew they had to leave immediately. What on earth happened? Tina gasped as Asa burst into the sanctuary with an urgency she had never seen before. Call everyone here, I need to address my people, Asa commanded. The snake people gathered quickly around their leader. Asa lifted her hand, and the room fell silent. My people, tonight there was an incident. Dr. Kofi is no more. He was a spy sent by our enemy to gather intel about us, and I'm sad to say he has succeeded in his mission. A murmur of disappointment spread through the crowd. They had lived in this sanctuary for years, keeping themselves and their home safe, masking their existence from the hunters, a skill they had honed over time. Now, because of Amina's actions, they had been found. Asa raised her hand again and the room fell silent once more. The death of the hunter is an advantage to us. The Brotherhood cannot make war before mourning their brethren for seven days. This means we have seven days to prepare for the battle of our lives. The room buzzed with nervous energy. Asa's eyes met Tina's. Tina, get me the maps of these tunnels. We need every detail. Right away, my queen, Tina said, bowing and rushing off. Asa turned to the council members, her voice urgent. I need a detailed report on our reinforcements, now. The huge stone table in the center of the room was quickly cleared, ready to become their command center and war room. This was not just a fight for survival. It was a fight for their very existence. Asa looked around at her people, feeling the weight of their trust and the enormity of the task ahead. She smiled, a fierce and determined grin. This was just like old times, but now the stakes were higher than ever. Jengo stood in front of the council members, strategizing about the upcoming war. The meeting was in full swing, tension thick in the air, when a voice shouted, Elder Jengo, turn on the news! A head popped into the war room. Jengo quickly clicked the TV on. As the screen lit up, he felt blood rushing to his face. Breaking news. A man was found deceased in this apartment behind me. The apartment belongs to a woman named Amina Kamau, an accountant at Apex Enterprises. Neighbors reported hearing explosions, screeching sounds, and screams coming from the apartment around 7pm yesterday. The man has not yet been identified. 
The prime suspect is Amina Kamau. She is described as being in her mid-twenties, with dark straight short hair and brown eyes, and was last seen wearing a black hoodie. Police are urging anyone with information to come forward. We will be following the story closely. Back to you in the studio. Elder Jengo was devastated. He had personally asked Kofi to check out the validity of the Snake Girl sighting since he was already in the area. Jengo had known Kofi since he was a young boy. They had been called in for a sighting of a snake person in the Congo Mountains. A boy had become violently ill after seeing a huge snake while playing in the forest with his friends. They had welcomed Kofi into the Brotherhood. From that day, Kofi had not left Jengo's side. Jengo had nicknamed him Shadow because of this and now he was gone. This war had become personal. A fire for revenge had been lit in his soul. He pressed the button for the intercom. All hunters stood at attention. As you have already heard, Jengo began, the flame of one of our brothers has been extinguished by our sworn enemy. Brother Kofi was more than just a brother to us. He was family. We will mourn for seven days as is our custom, but know this, we are now at war. We have seven days to prepare, use this time wisely, train harder, plan better, and remember Kofi's sacrifice. His spirit will guide us. We fight not just for ourselves, but for every brother who has fallen. We will show no mercy, we are hunters and we will hunt. The room erupted in a chorus of determined shouts. The hunters were ready, their resolve stronger than ever. They would avenge Kofi and protect their legacy. The war had begun. And that, my dear tribe members, is the end of yet another episode in our Snake People and Hunters series. This story was inspired by a viewer who made the connections we had previously hinted at between Sia and Zoro being related by blood. Thank you for your keen observations. As we follow the bloodlines and personal relationships, we inch closer and closer to the impending war. I asked in the last episode if we should bring the mermaids back, and the answer was a resounding yes. Your wish is my command. And as always, thank you for watching our story and we hope you enjoyed it. What lessons did you draw from this story? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and be part of the tribe. Thank you for watching The Tales of the Savannah. We will see you next time in the Savannah.